This is brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. Heterosis, hybrid vigor, or outbreeding enhancement, is the improved or increased function of any biological quality in a hybrid offspring. An offspring is heterotic if its traits are enhanced as a result of mixing the genetic contributions of its parents. These effects can be due to Mendelian or non-Mendelian inheritance. Definitions in proposing the term heterosis to replace the older term heterozygosis, G.H. Shaw aimed to avoid limiting the term to the effects that can be explained by heterozygosity in Mendelian inheritance. The physiological vigor of an organism as manifested in its rapidity of growth, its height, and general robustness is positively correlated with the degree of dissimilarity in the gametes by whose union the organism was formed. The more numerous the differences between the uniting gametes, at least within certain limits, the greater, on the whole, is the amount of stimulation. These differences need not be Mendelian in their inheritance. To avoid the implication that all the genotypic differences which stimulate cell division, growth, and other physiological activities of an organism are Mendelian in their inheritance, and also to gain brevity of expression I suggest that the word heterosis be adopted. Heterosis is often discussed as the opposite of inbreeding depression, although differences in these two concepts can be seen in evolutionary considerations such as the role of genetic variation or the effects of genetic drift in small populations on these concepts. Inbreeding depression occurs when related parents have children with traits that negatively influence their fitness largely due to homozygosity. In such instances, outcrossing should result in heterosis. Not all outcrosses result in heterosis. For example, when a hybrid inherits traits from its parents that are not fully compatible, fitness can be reduced. This is a form of outbreeding depression. Dominance versus overdomin overdominance. Dominance versus overdominance is a scientific controversy in the field of genetics that has persisted for more than a century. These two alternative hypotheses were first stated in 1908. Genetic Basis When a population is small or inbred, it tends to lose genetic diversity. Inbreeding depression is the loss of fitness due to the loss of genetic diversity. Inbred strains tend to be homozygous for recessive alleles that are mildly harmful, or produce a trait that is undesirable from the standpoint of the breeder. Heterosis or hybrid vigor, on the other hand, is the tendency of outbred strains to exceed both inbred parents in fitness. Selective breeding of plants and animals, 
including hybridization, began long before there was an understanding of underlying scientific principles. In the early 20th century, after Mendel's laws came to be understood and accepted, geneticists undertook to explain the superior vigor of many plant hybrids. Two competing hypotheses, which are not mutually exclusive, were developed. Dominance Hypothesis The dominance hypothesis attributes the superiority of hybrids to the suppression of undesirable recessive alleles from one parent by dominant alleles from the other. It attributes the poor performance of inbred strains to loss of genetic diversity, with the strains becoming purely homozygous at many loci. The dominance hypothesis was first expressed in 1908 by the geneticist Charles Davenport. Under the dominance hypothesis, deleterious alleles are expected to be maintained in a random mating population at a selection, mutation balance that would depend on the rate of mutation, the effect of the alleles, and the degree to which alleles are expressed in heterozygotes. Overdominance hypothesis Certain combinations of alleles that can be obtained by crossing two inbred strains are advantageous in the heterozygote. The overdominance hypothesis attributes the heterozygote advantage to the survival of many alleles that are recessive and harmful in homozygotes. It attributes the poor performance of inbred strains to a high percentage of these harmful recessives. The overdominance hypothesis was developed independently by Edward M. East, 1908, and George Schull, 1908. Genetic variation at an overdominant locus is expected to be maintained by balancing selection. The high fitness of heterozygous genotypes favors the persistence of allelic polymorphism in the population. Dominance and overdominance have different consequences for the gene expression profile of the individuals. If overdominance is the main cause of the fitness advantages of heterosis, then there should be an overexpression of certain genes in the heterozygous offspring compared to the homozygous parents. On the other hand, if dominance is the cause, fewer genes should be underexpressed in the heterozygous offspring compared to the parents. Furthermore, for any given gene, the expression should be comparable to the one observed in the fitter of the two par parents. Historical Retrospective Population geneticist James Crow, 1916 to 2012, believed in his younger days, that overdominance was a major contributor to hybrid vigor. In 1998, he published a retrospective review of the developing science. According to Crow, the demonstration of several cases of heterozygote advantage in Drosophila and other organisms first caused great enthusiasm for the overdominance theory among scientists studying plant hybridization. But overdominance implies that yields on an inbred strain should decrease as inbred strains are selected for the performance of their hybrid crosses, as the proportion of harmful recessives in the inbred population rises. Over the years, experimentation in plant genetics has proven that the reverse occurs, that yields increase in both the inbred strains and the hybrids suggesting that dominance alone may be adequate to explain the superior yield of hybrids. Only a few conclusive cases of overdominance have been reported in all of genetics. Since the 1980s, as experimental evidence has mounted, the dominance theory has made a comeback. Crow wrote, The current view is that the dominance hypothesis is the major explanation of inbreeding decline and of the high yield of hybrids. There is little statistical evidence for contributions from overdominance and epistasis. But whether the best hybrids are getting an extra boost from overdominance 
or favorable epistatic contributions remains an open question. Controversy The term heterosis often causes confusion and even controversy, particularly in selective breeding of domestic animals because it is sometimes, incorrectly, claimed that all crossbred plants and animals are genetically superior to their parents due to heterosis. However, however, there are two problems with this claim. First, according to an article published in the journal Genome Biology, genetic superiority is an ill-defined term and not generally accepted terminology within the scientific field of genetics. A related term fitness is well defined, but it can rarely be directly measured. Instead, scientists use objective, measurable quantities, such as the number of seeds a plant produces, the germination rate of a seed, or the percentage of organisms that survive to reproductive age. From this perspective, crossbred plants and animals exhibiting heterosis may have superior traits, but this does not necessarily equate to any evidence of outright genetic superiority. Use of the term superiority is commonplace for example in crop breeding, where it is well understood to mean a better yielding, more robust plant for agriculture. Such a plant may yield better on a farm, but would likely struggle to survive in the wild, making this use open to misinterpretation. In human genetics, any question of genetic superiority is even more problematic due to the historical and political implications of any such claim. Some may even go as far as to describe it as a questionable value judgment in the realm of politics, not science. Second, not all hybrids exhibit heterosis, see outbreeding depression. An example of the ambiguous value judgments imposed on hybrids and hybrid vigor is the mule. While mules are almost always infertile, they are valued for a combination of hardiness and temperament that is different from either of their horse or donkey parents. While these qualities may make them superior for particular uses by humans, the infertility issue implies that these animals would most likely become extinct without the intervention of humans through animal husbandry, making them inferior in terms of, of natural selection. Genetic and Epigenetic Bases Since the early 1900s, two competing genetic hypotheses not necessarily mutually exclusive, have been developed to explain hybrid vigor. More recently, an epigenetic component of hybrid vigor has also been established. The genetic dominance hypothesis attributes the superiority of hybrids to the masking of expression of undesirable, deleterious, recessive alleles from one parent by dominant, usual wild type, alleles from the other. It attributes the poor performance of inbred strains to the expression of homozygous deleterious recessive alleles. The genetic overdominance hypothesis states that some combinations of alleles, which can be obtained by crossing two inbred strains, are especially advantageous when paired in a heterozygous individual. This hypothesis is commonly invoked to explain the persistence of some alleles most famously the sickle cell trait allele, that are harmful in homozygotes. In normal circumstances, such harmful alleles would be removed from a population through the process of natural selection. Like the dominance hypothesis, it attributes the poor performance of inbred strains to the expression of such harmful recessive alleles. In any case, Outcross mating provide the benefit of masking deleterious recessive alleles in progeny. This benefit has been proposed to be a major factor in the maintenance of sexual reproduction among eukaryotes, as summarized in the article Evolution of Sexual Reproduction. An epigenetic contribution to heterosis has been established in plants, and it has also been reported in animals.
microRNAs, MRNAs, discovered in 1993, are a class of non-coding small RNAs that repress the translation of messenger RNAs, mRNAs, or cause degradation of mRNAs. In hybrid plants, most MRNAs have a non-additive expression, it might be higher or lower than the levels in the parents. This suggests that the small RNAs are involved in the growth, vigor, and adaptation of hybrids. 12. Hetero heterosis without hybridity effects on plant size has been demonstrated in genetically isogenic F1 triploid, autopolyploid, plants, where paternal genome excess F1 triploids display positive heterosis, whereas maternal genome excess F1S display negative heterosis effects. Such findings demonstrate that heterosis effects, with a genome dosage-dependent epigenetic basis, can be generated in F1 offspring that are genetically isogenic, i.e. harbor no heterozygosity. It has been shown that hybrid vigor in an allopolyploid hybrid of two Arabidopsis species was due to epigenetic control in the upstream regions of two genes, which caused major downstream alteration in chlorophyll and starch accumulation. The mechanism involves acetylation and or methylation of specific amino acids in histone H3, a protein closely associated with DNA, which can either activate or repress associated genes. Major histocompatibility complex, complex in animals. One example of where particular genes may be important in vertebrate animals for heterosis is the major histocompatibility complex, MHC. Vertebrates inherit several copies of both MHC class I and MHC class II from each parent, which are used in antigen presentation as part of the adaptive immune system. Each different copy of the genes is able to bind and present a different set of potential peptides to T lymphocytes. These genes are highly polymorphic throughout populations, but will be more similar in smaller, more closely related populations. Breeding between more genetically distant individuals will decrease the chance of inheriting two alleles which are the same or similar, allowing a more diverse range of peptides to be presented. This, therefore, gives a decreased chance that any particular pathogen will not be recognized and means that more antigenic proteins on any pathogen are likely to be recognized, giving a greater range of T-cell activation and therefore a greater response. This will also mean that the immunity acquired to the pathogen will be against a greater range of antigens, meaning that the pathogen must mutate more before immunity is lost. Thus hybrids will be less likely to succumb to pathogenic disease, and will be more capable of fighting off infection. Plants Crosses between inbreeds from different heterotic groups result in vigorous F1 hybrids with significantly more heterosis than F1 hybrids from inbreeds within the same heterotic group or pattern. Heterotic groups are created by plant breeders to classify inbred lines and can be progressively improved by reciprocal recurrent selection. Heterosis is used to increase yields, uniformity, and vigor. Hybrid breeding methods are used in maize, sorghum, rice, sugar beet, onion, spinach, sunflowers, broccoli, and to create more psychoactive cannabis. Corn, maize. Nearly, nearly all field corn, maize, grown in most developed nations exhibit heterosis. Modern corn hybrids substantially outyield conventional cultivars and respond better to fertilizer. Corn heterosis was famously demonstrated in the early 20th century by George H. Shull and Edward M. East after hybrid corn 
was invented by Dr. William James Beale of Michigan State University, based on work begun in 1879 at the urging of Charles Darwin. Dr. Beale's work led to the first published account of a field experiment demonstrating hybrid vigor in corn, by Eugene Davenport and Perry Holden, 1881. These various pioneers of botany and related fields showed that crosses of inbred lines made from a southern dent and a northern flint, respectively, showed substantial heterosis and outyielded conventional cultivars of that era. This is brought to you by The Praetorian, on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.